What's going on everybody? Thank you for tapping in with About Trout. If you're new here, my name is James Gerritsen. I am the owner and operator of the About Trout Guide Service and I guide over 200 days a year as well as trying to fish as much as I possibly can. Uh, today's video is going to be about line management, which I really just don't think gets talked enough about, um, especially on these YouTube, in the YouTube sphere of things. I think it's the biggest thing that you can do and the quickest fix to put more trout in the net um, land more trout while you're fighting them, getting a better hookup ratio. It's something that is kind of danced around and I want to kind of break it down into three parts for you. Um, I really had, I started filming this video I think in June, but the season just got pretty crazy. Uh, we've picked up some new water, we've added some new members to the team, uh, so things are, are, are really ripping over here. So I wanted to sit down and make this, share this with you guys, and hopefully it's going to put more fish in the net um, on your next adventure. But the rapper Biggie Smalls once said, more money, more problems. I wish I had that problem, but I think a problem we all have is more fly line, more problems, right? And really the thought behind this video came during high water. Now the San Juan, you know, kind of base flows around five to 700 cubic feet a second, and it got up to 4,600 CFS, which is usually a yearly event. The last five years we didn't have it. Um, and the difference between the anglers putting more fish in the water versus the ones that weren't was just all came down to line control, mending, fighting fish, managing slack. So when a fish did eat, you could get tight and keep that tension on a barbless hook. So I wanted to share these things with you because as we were fishing those longer, heavier leaders um, over more uh, complex currents than a lot of anglers are used to, we really saw kind of the difference in those that were better at managing line and those who were not. This applies whether you're wade fishing, you're fishing from a boat. Um, I just hope it helps you. So just remember every scenario is different per angler and just adjust accordingly. Let's break this video down into three parts. Number one is just gonna be kind of getting from point A to point B. This is usually more wade specific, but it also helps when, if you're in a drift boat and the guide or your buddy is rowing you back up, kind of how to manage that fly line. The second part, we'll just tap it, or the second part we'll just call presentation and that's after the fly lands what to do with your non-dominant hand your dominant hand whatever works for you and then the third part's just going to be fish fighting um, and this is where i see a lot of fish get lost that we should have landed um, and we're going to touch on that further in the video part one we're just going to start with a boat so if you're rowing back up or you're in a drift boat and you're rowing back up to hit a run you're going to want to retrieve that slack through one of your fingers. I personally like my middle finger. Some people like their pointer finger. Look, if you like your ring finger, I'm not telling you how to live your life. I just find those work best. Uh, but you're going to want to retrieve that slack through your finger, have a little bit of fly line coming out of the tip, and then hold your leader in your other hand. So that way, when your friend or the guide stops, you know, all you have to do is drop the leader. You already have line, you can just shoot it out and you're off to the races. Um, a lot of times, especially guiding out of a boat, it's over before it began because there's just, you know, people don't remember to keep some line under their finger or they're not holding the leader and they go to cast and it's a big jumbled mess. So making sure everything's clear um, when you're going back up river so you're ready to start when the boat stops is paramount. Um, when waiting from point A to point B, you know, I usually just hook one of the, the fly furthest away onto one of the eye guides and then bring that around a loop as a loop around um the the foot of the reel um i can i'll throw a clip up in here and then just walk from point a to point b just string it up don't try to walk holding it in one hand disaster will strike i remind myself of that every time it gets snagged in a bush or i'm too lazy to hang it up so so I don't really think there's much to expand on there for the first part. Now, part two is going to be your presentation. So this is what happens after the cast is made. Um, I think the two things that are going to get most anglers in trouble that I see, you know, are your wrist and your elbow during the cast, you know, kind of the chicken wing or just really wristing it, especially with more weight. It can tend to collapse everything um, and it'll tail on itself. So just off the bat for casting, you know, trying to keep that elbow down, trying to keep that wrist locked, let the rod work for you. Don't try to really work the rod. That over application of power on the forward cast causes a lot of tailing loops. 
um, and the, the cast can just completely fall apart as well. So if everything smashes the water, not good presentation, and that all starts just with your elbow and your wrist. I think those two things are going to get you in a lot of trouble. Um, really though, in terms of managing the line properly, once that lands whether I'm in a boat or I'm waiting, I like to keep my tip low off the bat to try to prevent fly line coming under the rod tip. That's really going to distort a lot of your drifts. And the other thing is immediately putting line between one of the fingers on your non-dominant hand. I'm a crab person, look at me. Uh, so after you make the cast, keeping the tip low, if the tip stays high a lot of times, you can jerk it and that indicator dry fly or streamer is going to come back to you, put some slack in the system, and, and really hurt your presentation. Um, but by, by keeping that tip low, it can prevent kind of dragging it back and then immediately putting fly line under your finger. Um, all too often, someone hooks a fish, they're holding fly line in their left hand, holding the rod in their right hand, and then they're doing this and the fish gets off pretty much every time. So making a habit to put fly line under one of your fingers. Now the reason you only wanna do one is because if you crimp the fly line with four of your four fingers, and a fish starts to run, you can't drop that fly line and the fish is gonna pop you. And if you don't believe me, I watch it happen every day. So keeping that fly line is gonna help you retrieve that slack and it's also gonna help you during fighting the fish. The other thing that I see with a lot of anglers is just holding line with their left hand after they make the cast. And you know, we just touched on that, but the, there's a lot of reasons you don't want to do that. I always joke that your non-dominant hand is like uh, a Vince Vaughn, right? It's like a supporting actor. It comes in, it comes out, it advances the plot, but it's not the main character. Sorry, Vince, I love you. My thing is, or, or the reasoning behind that, there's a couple. So sometimes when someone holds the line with their left hand and the rod in their right hand, they have a tendency to set the hook like this. When they do that, you, they don't get a good follow through on the hook set, a weaker hook set, they don't grab as much meat and the fish usually gets off. Uh, you know, if it works for you, what well, you know, live your truth. Uh, the other reason is after you hook the fish, you can't retrieve the slack, especially if the fish runs at you. And so you end up having to do this weird dance where you, f where you put the fly line here, you're doing this, and then you, you initially get back to a position that you could have started with. So just as a habit, try to remove that left hand from the equation unless you're retrieving, unless you're retrieving slack, you know, you're feeding slack, you're stripping flies, you know, whatever. But being too non-rod hand dominant can really hurt you. You know, touching on that again too, when you're holding the line and you do these choppy hook sets like that, especially if you're fishing weight, those flies are gonna come smack you right in the face. So being able to kind of follow through, get that extension on the rod and get that weight, that drop, whatever, to come up and over your head is gonna save you, save your eyes and save your guide. Um, the other big thing with line management is the mending. Um, I see far too often, you know, people really jack in the line and creating a flag in the line, either downstream or upstream. And a good way that I've found to communicate kind of more subtle mends to people uh, is pointing that rod tip at the indicator. Before you can even do that though, you're gonna to have to remove tension from the system. If you wanna control line, you have to have tension and strip the slack out before you begin to do, before you begin to do anything. Um, but during that mend, pointing the rod tip at the indicator, stripping a little bit of slack out, you could also break your wrist to separate that floating line from the water and then you can mend it. I always say it's kind of like turning a pancake over. Uh, but far too often people have a tendency to over mend or they jack their rod to the right or left, upstream, downstream, whatever. Um, and what happens is you create a disconnect. So now your rod tip is over here, your indicator is over here. And when you go to set the hook, there's all that slack in the system and you just tend to miss more fish. So. With line control, before you do anything, cl cleaning up that slack. Um, a lot of times too, people will try to recast or mend with fly line under the rod tip and the whole cast just falls apart or the flies come right at them. So really staying on top of that slack. Slack is whack, Unle unless it's not and you need to drag free drift. But just remember these little guidisms here.
Um, and then lastly is just fighting fish. I mean, it all, it, I'm saying the same thing different ways. That's probably because I am a fishing guide. You got to think of some fun ways to say it, right? But when you're fighting the fish, more fish get lost to holding the line in the left hand and holding a fly line in the right hand or your non-dominant hand, dominant hand, and doing this number. The rod tip will bounce, the flies will come out. And if you just start with that, um, fly line under your finger, you're going to eliminate a lot of those issues as they come up. Um, the other thing too, is I see a lot of people trying to fight fish over their head. Lifting the rod tip over your head is a good way initially to take control of the slack, especially if a fish is running at you. Once you get tight to that fish though, if you drop your elbow, you know, you're able to use your wrist to get a huge extension on the rod and stay tight because if you're up here you can't put any more bend in the rod and you're, do you're doing this number and the fish can run if you're down here you can come around your left shoulder around your right shoulder really force that flex into the rod and it's really going to help you um, at the later stages of the battle especially when that fish is close to the boat and you can't do anything here if you're if you're down you can retrieve all that slack right and get those fish into the boat I mean, I, you know, these are just quick, simple tips that I think will really help you and remedy a lot of the fish getting lost. I'll recap it real quick, but I, I don't think we need to, to go crazy on this video. So just remember, left hand supporting actor, wrist bad, unless you're using it to separate the fly line uh, from the water, elbow bad, try to keep that thing down. Um, try to only keep line under one of your digits on your dominant hand. If you have them under all four and a fish goes to run, you'll pop that fish pretty much every time you, you won't be able to drop line and clear it or use that finger as a break to really control uh, what the fish is doing and then finally fighting the fish again trying to strip through when you have the line pinned and you set the hook under one of your digits there now you're going to get a good you know be able to drive that hook in and then you can reach up right strip through stay tight and then start stripping under your dominant hand there is no wrong or right way you know, just do what works for you. But I can tell you getting that left hand out of the equation and really relying on that rod hand are going to help you significantly. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys on the water or on the next one. Thanks.